what kind of dirtbag are you when your sister has an issue? Her niece or nephew is put to your custody. Let me tell you a story. Back in 2018, I adopted my niece. She was almost five. Long story short, my sister had an episode and she lost her kid to the state. Tell me why I became uncle dad overnight because none, and I mean none of our siblings with children would take my niece. One of my favorite sayings in Spanish is, donde comen cinco, comen seis, which mean where five can eat, six can eat. It's pretty much seamless to add another mouth. That shows you how problematic my sister was that none of our siblings with children would take her. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I went all the way out for this little girl. She said she like frozen, so I was like bed bedding, a trash can, a nightlight, motherfucking wall stickers, nigga. I was not playing. Uncle Jamal was in effect. I even went to the internet and learned how to do hairstyles for a little girl because, you know, I'm a grown-ass nigga. I don't know how to do no little girl hair. See them barrettes in there with them little things. Man, that shit ain't no accident, nigga. That's Uncle Jamal, nigga. Zigzag parts with the ponytail nigga i was doing box braids don't play with me and we ain't even gonna talk about the process of having to execute a proper wash day for a little black girl's hair i even had to get her registered for kindergarten at one point in time my sister was the baby mama drama that i never had and never wanted it literally got to the point where we had to communicate via the social worker only he was that bad then my poor niece she had stereotypical strippers kid syndrome she was so used to lying and getting away with it that she lied all the time for it everything look at this cute ass face now imagine this four-year-old lying as much as a 14 year old does and you know i ain't gonna tolerate this lying from the little girl she was always on punishment but she did not give a fuck do you know why i couldn't touch her i had her via the state if i would have popped her on her mouth a little bit guess who's going to jail my black ass and dog babysitting was falling through every single week mind you i didn't have nine months of pregnancy to get ready for this shit it was overnight and i was a waiter i work evenings nigga i need help i got so much blood family in the chicago land area and when i tell you none of these people who have so much experience with children loved me enough to be able to tolerate more than one tough night with a four-year-old who does not know you Literally, the only reason she feel comfortable with me leaving her here is because she trusts her Uncle Jamal, and Uncle Jamal say it's cool, but she still don't know y'all. Of course it's gonna be difficult the first night, maybe the first couple nights. Now don't get it twisted. Uncle Jamal saying you cool at the time meant a whole lot. That shit hell wait, but she's still only almost five. Not to mention, she's away from her single mom for the second extended period of time in her very short life. And the first time she was away from her mom was traumatizing enough. She was literally in a county jail fighting an attempted murder charge because after an argument, her boyfriend chose to get out the car, so she ran him over. The man was small and it was a truck. He almost died. This love drunk idiot kept coming to court like, nah, your honor, it ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? It was just a little, nah, it ain't like that. The nigga couldn't even walk. And of course his family wouldn't take him to court. So you know who was picking his dumb ass up so he can come to court and testify? My black ass. Cause even though I can't stand this little heifer, that's my little sister. I ungrateful little sister i got a bad niece who i'm giving all the empathy i can possibly muster to and babysitting's falling through every week not to mention i told you all the blood relatives that i have in the greater chicagoland area when i tell you not one time did them people bring us no food? Now, one time, I know I grew up in North Carolina. I was born here. I grew up in North Carolina. I'm Southern at heart. So, you know, I expect a certain type of love from people who you call family. But, like, one time, nobody brought us no food, nigga. I ain't talk about no money, nigga, no food. Please don't ask me why I don't fuck with my family. You can imagine how tough this shit was. Hell, you can hear it in my voice when I reminisce about it. But one thing I never, ever, ever thought about doing, turn on my front camera record myself crying add music and post that shit to the internet but i just but i just got one thing i just got a couple things to say to my niece one time um i know it's been a few years and i know your mother's probably convinced you that i did something terrible to you because i know how she is um i think about you all the time I hope you turn out to be a great person, but I can't communicate with you because I can't deal with your mother and I'm sorry. But I want you to know out of all the videos that I've made and that are on my phone, I want you to know this is my most prized possession.
I told my little story on TikTok and then my sister got embarrassed. She went on a full smear campaign against me on the internet. He kind of stirred this whole concoction mm. of a story up because uh, an unfortunate incident happened to where as I had to drive past my house and I thought that my daughter was asleep. Um, mm. I couldn't stop at the house for a reason. So, um, when they called him, he could have just picked my daughter up and just said, well, let me figure out what's going on, blah, blah, blah. He didn't do that. He sat down and made a thick booklet of a statement on me, against me, which caused DCFS to open the case. Just utter the words like, what are you doing? I'm your sister. For about a year now, my brother has been slandering my name and my child's name. He's been harassing us or cyberbullying us. And he just recently made three new videos bashing us. I made a police report. He's made up lies saying he adopted my child, publicly calling me a sex worker, which is completely false. My daughter ran across a video and began to cry. I'm getting depressed because I know I am being humiliated and bullied. In the background of his videos, it's either my child's face or mine. This is again humiliating. He also posted my entire name publicly and people are bothering me. For the well-being of myself and my child, I ask that you require him to remove everything that refers to myself and my child. Little girl, I haven't talked to you in person since 2018. I have countless numbers blocked because you have multiple phones and you use those apps to use different lines to contact people when they don't want to be contacted by you. You were the first little girl I ever called a bitch in my life. You were 16 or 17. And then you pulled a knife on me because of it. And I looked at you right in your face and said, what are you going to do? And I disarmed you. Do you know why? Because I'm your older brother, bitch. We came out the same coochie, but I came out three and a half years before you. You do realize that a court of law is based on facts, not your opinion. And just because you're humiliated by your poor decisions, that does not mean what I've done is illegal. More importantly, when I first posted the videos about adopting my niece, fostering my niece, Parental care of niece. Either way, she was a ward of the state, bitch. Because you lost her. So now that I've told my story, which happened to include your daughter, I didn't even include your name or nothing. And then your black ass chose to reach out to a bitch-made ass nigga who lives in Las Vegas. Yeah, I know where you live, nigga. In that uh, gated community. I know exactly where you stay at. You chose to reach out to this bitch made ass nigga and attempt to slander my name by telling this bullshit ass fabricated story. Walks out of his room. Brandon he's Jamal. Oily. Brandon Jamal, he's oily as, as a as a he's oily, like with oil. And he just has his boxes on. And I look up and he's got a heart on. I, and, and he's standing over me. And I'm looking, and he's just got the weirdest look on his face. And I just utter the words, like, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. I'm your sister. Like, whoa, what are you doing? Had and to he remind kinda Spoiled up with a hard on and stood over you, smirked, and then walked away. Why would you allow me? to take custody of your daughter. Why wouldn't you tell the social workers this when I had your daughter to get her away from me? He has um, mental issues. Look girl, I know you've been delusional your entire life, so you probably can't see this, but the entire internet can tell you lying. Is this you? This is exactly why I gave up after only about three months having my niece. Everything I would have done over that year would have been undone in a week and a half, because I would have gave her back today. You have a daughter. You have a daughter. You have a daughter. What's up, guys? I'm Mark Wondrick, the Saint and Sinner. Welcome to my Born Ass Podcast. Today we have 
your name? My name is Zaitha Sharon Blake, but I have the most basic stripper name ever. It's called Dior Lee, but I spell Lee with an I at the end, so it's not so basic. But I'm like, I'm basically like the fanciest, most basic bitch you'll ever meet. What is your claim to fame? Well, I have a brother. He kidnapped my daughter. Kidnapped? Kidnapped her and took her away from me for three months and convinced the state of Illinois. Oh, <laughs> you feel me? And now you put an order of protection on me. Bitch, I don't ever want to see you, but you just mad that you can't stop me from doing me because you're so arrogant that you feel like since I can't stop him from doing this, it must be illegal. I would blame your vindictive evil energy on working 10 years on a pole, cause I get it. You know, most women, they strip for a couple years and get out the game. But 10 years working that pole, that'll do it to you. I know you got a bad knee. I call it stripper's knee. Cause 10 years on that pole, it, it, it'll do it to you. Maybe you didn't spend 10 years on that pole. Sex worker. You wouldn't look like my older sister. Sex worker. As opposed to my baby sister. Several court dates later. Order of protection vacated. Sex worker. You know, my sister did what a lot of ran through women do. They strip, then they get them a nice stud to hold it down. So that being said, mother, this little girl asked for this. Bitch, nigga, don't you